guys. This video is going to be um, reviewing your topic 14 reteaching in your book. Um, hopefully it works this time. You guys are going to laugh because I just recorded this or I thought I was recording it and it didn't actually record it. So this is the second time I'm doing this, but it's the first time you guys get to see it. So hopefully this works this time. Uh, please go grab your math books if you don't already have them. It's really important that you follow along and check your answers. That way you know which ones you got wrong and then you can either review them with me on Classcraft or you can ask a family member to help you review them before you take your test. Okay, I want you to be able to do the best that you can on your test. Okay, so we're going to try this again and hopefully it doesn't cut me off because that was very, very frustrating. <laughs> Okay, set A. <clears throat> so you should all be on page 795. They want us to tell time to the nearest minute. Okay, so they we know that we can skip count by fives for the big numbers. And then when we get to the little tiny lines in between the big numbers, we have to count by ones. Okay, we also know that when we're talking about hour, which is the little hand, when it's exactly on the hour, so for instance, 10 o'clock, the hour hand is going to be exactly on the 10. As it gets closer to 11, it's going to start to move from the 10 towards the 11, but it won't actually hit the 11 until it gets to 11 o'clock, okay? So everywhere between 10.01 and 10.59, it's going to be inching closer and closer and closer to the 11, okay? So it says that write the time shown on each clock in two ways. So we've talked about this before. So the first way that I would write it is the digital time, right? With the minutes and then dot, dot, I'm sorry, the hour, dot, dot, and then the minutes. Um, but if you, um, if you are given a digital clock, obviously they already give you the digital time. And so then what you're going to be writing on there is um, in words. So either way, it doesn't really matter if your answers aren't exactly like what I'm going to tell you in number one and number two, that's totally fine. So for number one, okay, uh, we can see that the hour hand is after the 12, but before the one. And so we know that the time is going to be 12 o'clock. We now need to figure out our minutes, okay? So the hour is 12, now we need to count our minutes. So what you're going to do is you're going to start at the 12 and that's zero, that would be 12 o'clock. So if we count to the one, five, to the two, 10, to the three, 15, we can't go any further by fives. So now we need to count the little lines and we would go 16, 17. So the time on number one is 12, 17. You then could choose how you wanted to do the next part. So you could either say 17 minutes past 12, you could say 17 minutes after 12, um, or you could go the other way and talk about how long it is until one. It doesn't matter to you. Uh, it doesn't matter to me either. Um, what what matters is a lot of times people just do the one that it's closest to. So because 17 is closer to zero than to 60, a lot of people would say how long it is after something, but it doesn't really matter. That's up to you. Number two. Um, okay, so if we look at this, we can see that the hour hand, which is the little one, is between the six and the seven. So we know the hour has to be six o'clock. We now have to find the minutes. So if we start at the 12, we can count by fives. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. We cannot go all the way to the 45 because that would be too far. So now that we're on the 8, which is the 40, we're going to count by ones. 41, 42, 43, 44. So the time for number 2 is 6, 44. Now, that's closer to 7 o'clock than it is to 6. So what most people would write would be 16 minutes till 7 or 16 minutes to 7. But if you really wanted to, you could say 44 minutes after 6 or 44 minutes past 6. It's up to you. All right, set B. So this is finding elapsed time, and they're using a clock face to do it. You could also use, just use like addition or subtraction. Uh, you can use skip counting. It doesn't really matter how you do it as long as you can find the elapsed time. Number one, basketball practice begins at 6.30 p.m. and lasts until 8.15 p.m. How much time does practice last? So what you normally would do on, on a problem like this is to first find how many hours, okay? So if we're starting at 6.30 p.m., okay, and we know it's going until 8.15 p.m., well, let's think about how many hours we could add to 6.30. 
6.30 plus one hour would give us 7.30. If we add another hour, it takes us to 8.30. That's too far. So we know it's only one hour, okay? So you could write down on your paper one hour. We need now have to figure out the minutes. So we know that 6.30 p.m. plus one hour gives us 7.30 p.m. Well, we need now need to fi figure out how to get from 7.30 to 8.15. So the easiest way to do that is to first get to 8 o'clock. So we know to get from 7.30 to 8 o'clock is 30 minutes because 60 minus 30 equals 30. So we now have 6.30 plus one hour and 30 minutes takes us to 8 o'clock. We're still not there yet. So from 8 to 8.15, that's 15 minutes. So if we add 30 minutes plus 15 more minutes, we get 45 minutes, okay? So our answer would be one hour, 45 minutes. Number two, Mr. Walters starts preparing breakfast at 6.45 a.m. He finishes at 7.50 a.m. How long does it take for him to prepare breakfast? Okay, so if we're starting at 6.45, right, and we add an hour, we're going to get to 7.45 a.m. That is very close to 7.50 a.m., so we cannot add an extra hour. So on your paper, you could write one hour. We now have to figure out how many minutes. So we have to get from, from 7.45 to 7.50. You could count on your fingers, you could look at a clock, or you could subtract 50 minus, uh, 50 minus 45, and you get five. So that means your, your answer is one hour and five minutes. Now, some of you may have figured that one hour is 60 minutes, and so 60 plus five is 65 minutes. That's fine too if you put the answer with 65 minutes. Okay, number three, Jean rides her horse twice a week at Free and Bold Stables. One Monday, she goes for a horseback ride. She leaves the barn on her horse at 2.10 p.m. and comes back at 2.50 p.m. How long was her ride? Okay, because 2.10 starts with the 2 and 2.50 starts with the 2, we know that we cannot add an hour because 2.10 plus an hour would give us 3.10. So what we need to do is only find the minutes. And to do that, we can subtract the time she stopped from um, and subtract out the time she started. In other words, 2.50 minus 210 would give us our answer. So 50 minus 10 is 40. So the answer to number three is 40 minutes. Okay. All right, let's try the next one. And I'm still recording, so that's good. Okay. So let's see. This is using um, a number line to do time intervals. Okay. So it's saying to remember whether you need to add or subtract. So in order to figure that out, what you're going to be doing is using your keywords that you learned in second grade and that we reviewed this year to find out um, what it's asking you to do. It's really important that you guys circle the things that are important or underline them or something because that's what's going to help you to solve the problem is when you have all your information. So it says to either solve by drawing a number line or a bar diagram. The number line is on the left. We know that a bar diagram um, has the boxes underneath and the total on the top. Um, it doesn't matter to me which way you use, okay? What makes a difference is because we're doing the, the test online from home, um, a lot of times they start it for you. So if they start a bar diagram, you may have to finish the bar diagram. If they start um, a number line, you are going to have to finish the number line. But you could always do on paper and pencil, you could work it out your own way and then kind of look to see if you can figure out how to then um, uh, figure it out with, with whatever um, strategy they're asking you to do. So I know that it's a little bit different than when we do it in class where I kind of let you guys pick. Um, but just make sure that you know both. They're, they're very, very similar, okay? So I'm going to kind of explain number one both ways. That way you guys could kind of see. So number one says it takes Dawn 52 minutes to drive to work. 52 minutes is important, so you should circle or underline it. He has already driven for 16 minutes. 16 minutes is important, so circle it or underline it. How many more minutes will it take Dawn to drive to work? So if it takes him 52 minutes and he's already done 16, okay, you're going to do 52 minus 16, don't forget to regroup, and you get 36 minutes. So number one is 36 minutes. Here's how to show it, though, if they want you to do a bar diagram or if they want you to do a number line. So if we're on a number line, right, and zero minutes, and then we're going all the way to 52 minutes, okay, that's how long it takes. We have to get to 52. 
Well, he's already driven for 16. So from 0 to 16, he already did that, right? So that's one chunk. We now have to figure out how to get from 16 to 52. And you could count on your number line that way. You could subtract it, oh, excuse me, and draw an arrow. But that's how you would get your answer. If you're doing a bar diagram, the total goes at the top. So the total would be 52. We then have two blocks, right? What he's already driven and what he has to drive. So 52 would be at the top, 16 would be in one of the boxes, and in the other box would be a question mark or an X, right? It doesn't matter. So then we would know that if we know the top, it has to be subtraction or division. Well, they're not equal groups, so we can't use division, but we can use subtraction. So 52 minus 16 would give you what to put in the other box, which we know is 36, okay? If you guys have any questions about either one of those, feel free to go back in um, Pearson Realize and look over your um, lesson video again. You can message me on Classcraft and I can help you. You can ask a family member, um, but the test may ask you to do one or both of those. Okay, set D. Let's see. Okay, all right. Set D says that we are estimating the capacity Okay, so in other words, capacity is how much liquid is going to fit into one of these containers. So an estimate means a rounding or a guess. It's not exact. We're guessing which one is more correct, right? So if I said, is a school day more like five hours or is a school day more like five seconds, you would know that the closer estimation is five hours, even though that's not exactly correct. All right, number one. So that looks like it's some kind of like soda or juice bottle. So liters, I always think of as a big giant two liter, right? A two liter comes from like the pizza place. Um, maybe your parents get like Sprite or something. So that's a two liter. So if you chop that in half, right, it would be about half of one of those. Now, if we're talking about milliliters, a milliliter is like a drop, okay? So would a would a some kind of drink bottle be more like one liter okay or would it be like 10 liters in other words if we have two liters five of them would that be the same as one smaller bottle no so the answer for number one is one liter number two is some kind of bucket right maybe you would take it to the beach maybe your parents would use it to wash the car something like that so is a bucket like that going to hold eight milliliters or eight drops of water, or is it gonna hold eight liters, which is like eight of those drink bottles on number one, and the closer estimate is eight liters because eight drops wouldn't really do anything for us. Number three, a drinking glass. All that means is like when you sit down at, at the dinner table, right, and you have a glass and your mom fills it with like milk or juice or ice water or something like that, that's what they're asking for. So a glass that you would use to drink liquid out of at dinner, would that have five drops, five milliliters, or 500 milliliters, which is like 500 drops? And the answer should be 500 milliliters. Five drops wouldn't do anything for you. Number four, a washing machine. So when you pull up the lid to the washing machine, right, and inside is like a big cube, and you throw your clothes in there, and then once you close it, it fills up with water, and then it swishes them all around to wash it. So would a washing machine hold 40 of those bottles of water or would it hold four of those bottles of water? Well, a washing machine needs a lot of water to wash your clothes, right? If you think about it, if your laundry hamper um, fills all the way to the top and then you can put it in the washing machine, that's a lot of clothes. So it needs 40 liters, okay? 40 water bottles worth of water. Okay, set E. This is actually finding the capacity. So it says, remember to use the correct units when measuring capacity. So this is like what I always tell you guys, you have to have the right label or it's not going to make sense, okay? So what you need to do is you need to make sure that you're adding them correctly and that you're labeling them correctly. I know we're doing it online, but if you do not have um, a label, if we were actually writing it in a piece of paper, right, it would be wrong. So just pay attention, even though it's probably multiple choice or choose all or something like that. Just make sure that you're paying attention to your label. Okay, so the first contain, so for number one, the first container is filled all the way to the top up to one liter. 
The second container is not going all the way up to one liter. So we know it's not one liter plus one liter. So what I would write down is one liter or one L, okay? Make sure you do a capital L because otherwise it looks like a one. We then have to figure out how many milliliters is also needs to be added to that. So we then can count up on the capacity on the container to find the capacity. And we can see that there are 10 lines between the bottom and one liter. So in other words, we know that we need to count by 100. So if we go 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, 700, 800, 900 milliliters. So the total for number one is one liter, 900 milliliters. Number two. Now, we can see that this one's measured differently, right? It's labeled differently. So that's why it's really important that you pay attention. So this one could be all the way up to 200 milliliters. Well, we know that it's not all the way up to the top. It's a little bit over 100. So we know our number is going to be somewhere between 100 and 200. So if you didn't get a number that's somewhere between 100 and 200, you did it wrong. So if we look at it, we can figure out that there are one, two, three, four, five lines between the bottom and 100. So if we divide 100 by five, we get 20. So that's what we need to skip count by. So if we start at the bottom, we're going to go 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120. And so the answer to number two is 120 milliliters. Little m, big L. Okay, make sure you don't write a little L, otherwise it looks like a one um, if you were actually handwriting it. Okay, now let's switch to page 297. Just give me one second. Make sure that I'm still recording. Uh, okay, so... the way. Okay. Make it bigger. Okay. All right. Set F. So set F says that um, you need to circle the best estimate for the mass. So a mass, the mass is basically on a solid object. Okay. So not a liquid. Um, now, I always tell people, and I have told some of you as I was working with you in Classcraft or as, um, you know, I, I was giving you feedback in an email or something like that. G is grams, right? G for grapes, okay? A gram is like a grape. So grapes are small, right? And they are very lightweight. A kilogram is more like um, a melon, okay? So not like a watermelon, but like, like a cantaloupe, okay? <clears throat> now, think about that as you're looking at the various objects to think about whether grams or kilograms make more sense. So, is a pen more like 15 grapes or 15 melons? And we know that the answer should be grapes, so number one is 15 grams. Number two, that's a ball of yarn, right? We know yarn is real lightweight, so is it going to be the same as 500 grapes or 500 melons? And we know that the answer is 500 grapes. So you should have circled 500 grams. Number three, one sheep. Okay, they're talking about the animal. So a sheep is going to be more like a human, right? So would a sheep weigh, or I'm sorry, would the mass of a sheep be 800 grams, like 800 grapes, or 80 melons, 80 kilograms. Well, we know 800 grapes or 800 grams is not enough. So the answer would be 80 kilograms. Number four, a bag of flour. A bag of flour that you'd probably, your parents would buy at the grocery store maybe to make a cake or muffins or something, right? Probably about like this big, maybe. So would a bag of flour like that have a mass of two grapes or two melons, and we know that two grapes is way too small, and so the answer would be two kilograms, or two melons, right? Number five, a notebook computer. What that means is like a laptop computer, okay? Chromebook, something like that. So, would a notebook computer be the same as three grapes or three melons? And we know that a notebook computer would be about the same as three melons, so three kilograms.
three grams is way too small. Number six, a quarter, right? Like a quarter that you would have in your pocket, um, like as money as change. So a quarter we could balance on like one fingertip, right? It was real lightweight. So would a quarter be the same as five grapes or 500 grapes? And we know that a quarter that can balance on one little finger would be five grapes or five grams. Okay, now let's look at set G. So for set G, they used, they showed you a pan balance. Um, obviously, you probably don't want to have one at home, but if you remember where we talked about this in class and we talked about like the seesaw, right? And so um, if things are even, right, it means that they have the same mass. If one is going way up, right, or way down, it means that one has a greater mass than the other. So those little silver things that they're showing you a picture of, those are the weights that they have on top of the pan balance in the example in the book. So <clears throat> for number one, they want us to find the total mass. All you have to do is add those together or skip count however you want to solve it. So number one, so first we have 500 grams, then we have 100. So 500 plus 100 is 600, plus another 100 would be 700, plus one would be 701 grams. You can just put G if you want. It doesn't really matter. Number two. Now, we have two that have a different label. So the first two, the big two, are kilograms, all right? So if we say one kilogram plus one kilogram, that gives us two kilograms. Now we need to add the grams. So 100 plus 100 is 200, plus 5 is 205, plus 5 is 210. So our answer for number two is two kilograms, 210 grams, right? It's all together. It's two kilograms and 210 grams. Okay. So I know we already talked about it, but this chapter has two problem solving lessons in it. The first problem solving lesson is about um, mass and capacity. Okay. So they're suggesting you either use a bar diagram or um, <clears throat> depending on what else you had, you could use a number line, you could use an array, it kind of depends on what they're asking you to do. So um, obviously, like we talked about before, when you have, um, when you're doing the online test, sometimes they pick for you, okay? Um, but when you're doing it on paper and pencil, you can pick the strategy that's best for you. And if you are unsure if you did their example correctly, I would, um, I would suggest that you maybe do it your way on a piece of paper and check to make sure that you got the same answer. The most important thing is that you circle or underline the important information and then that will help you to know what you need to do. So for number one, the water tank in Mary's yard holds 60 liters of water. She used 13 liters to water her plants. How many liters of water remain in the water tank? So 60 liters of water total, that's important. She used 13 liters, that's important. How many liters of water remain? So remain means how much is left. So if we're trying to find how much is left, right? The total is 60, she used 13, and we don't know what goes in this box. So you would put a question mark or an X or whatever. Well, when we know the total, we know we have to take the total minus whatever amount we know, and that will give us the unknown amount. So 60 minus 13, you have to regroup, equals 47 liters. Don't forget your label. And then that would be how much that she has left. All right, number two. Eric has three dogs that each have a mass of eight kilograms. What is the total mass of all Eric's dogs? So three dogs, eight kilograms each, right? Equal groups. So total mass tells us we have to combine, right? So we can either do addition or we can do multiplication. Now, since they're equal groups, you can use multiplication if you want. It doesn't really matter. If you were doing a Bayer diagram, the total goes at the top. We don't know the total, so a question mark would go at the top. You're then either going, you're then going to do three boxes, right? And you're going to have eight, eight, eight. So what you can do is you can do three times eight, equals 24 kilograms, or you can do eight plus eight plus eight equals 24 kilograms. You're gonna get the same answer, okay? Different equations, but you get the same answer because they're equal groups. So either one is fine with me. 
All right, set I. Okay, so this is problem solving on time. Now, elapsed time means um, how much has taken place, right, between the time you started doing something and ended something. This is kind of the same thing, it's just working backwards. So for instance, if you know that you have to go to school at a certain time, your mom or dad have already figured out, well, okay, if they have to be on the bus at this time, we have to start getting ready at this time, which means we have to get up at this time, okay? It's just working your way backwards to kind of figure out a puzzle. So the first thing we need to do is read it and we need to underline the things that are important. At one o'clock p.m., Ted will meet a friend in the park. So 1 o'clock p.m. is important. Ted needs 30 minutes to walk to the park. So 30 minutes to walk. Ted needs 15 minutes to eat lunch. 15 minutes to eat lunch is important. And 10 minutes to prepare lunch, right, to get it ready. That's important. When must Ted start to prepare lunch? So we have to figure out when does Ted have to start to get here at 1 o'clock. So number one says describe the quantities you know. In other words, what is the important information you already underlined? So, Ted needs to be at the park at 1 o'clock. He needs 30 minutes to walk, 15 minutes to eat, 10 minutes to make lunch. Those are the four important things we need to know. Number two, how can you show the relationships in this problem? So that's kind of up to you. It's basically asking how would you solve it? Count backwards on a clock, use a number line, um... I mean, really show your work with like subtracting. It doesn't really matter. Um, I would probably say something about counting backwards on a clock or a number line, but it's up to you. It's basically just how would you solve this? Number three is you actually have to solve this. So when must Ted start to prepare lunch? So <clears throat> we know at one o'clock p.m. he's going to be at the park. So 30 minutes before that, he needs to start walking. Well, we know that the hour before one is 12. And we know that if it says 0, 0, that's the same thing as 60. So if if 60 minus 30 minutes, that gives us 30. So because the hour before 1 is 12, we know at 1 o'clock he needs to be there. At 12.30, he needs to start walking, okay? So if he starts walking at 12.30, <clears throat> he's going to eat lunch before that. So we need to take out the 15 minutes he takes to eat lunch. So if we have 12.30, we're going to subtract 15. 12.30 minus 15 is 12.15. So he needs to start eating his lunch at 12.15. But first he has to make it. So it takes him 10 minutes to make his lunch. So 12.15 minus 10, and that puts you at 12.05 p.m. It's important you label it, right? If we labeled it 12.05 a.m., that would be in the middle of the night, after midnight, and you probably wouldn't be making your lunch. Now, let's check our answer just to make sure we did our math correct. So if we're saying he needs to start at 12.05, right, he's going to take 10 minutes to prepare his lunch. So 12.05 plus 10 minutes is 12.15. At 12.15, he's going to start eating lunch. It's going to take him 15 minutes. So 12.15 plus 15 more minutes is 12.30. Okay, at 12.30, he's going to start walking to the park. It's going to take him half an hour, 30 minutes. So at 12.30 plus 30 would give you 1 o'clock at the park. If we check our problem, we can see he does need to be there at 1 o'clock. And so our answer is correct. So number 3 is 12.05 p.m. Now, if you had any questions about any of these um, sets on the reteaching, please, please, ask me, go back into your math book, watch some more videos, ask a family member for help, but please do not take the test until you've reviewed this and you make sure you're comfortable with it. Um, now please check out the topic 14 um, practice test video, check that work, and then you may get on and take your math test. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Bye.